Jean Luc Aion, Natural State. Extract from Agape Wabanger. October 14, 2020. NB, the natural state can never be an effort. Remember that what I am saying has nothing to do with work to be done but is something that is established quite naturally without any effort. JLA. Well, then, I will talk to you about the clinical signs of Agape's natural state. As a preamble, I would like to make it clear that when you're in the natural state you can't ignore it at all. It is the recognition of what has always been there. So the one who lives it, there's no doubt, he may have doubts about his health, about what is going to happen but not about what he is. Besides, it's quite funny, if I can say that in the last two years I must have had thousands, thousands of messages, these people who ask me if they're agape. But it's often the same answer. Only you can recognize yourself. Recognition is immediate, just I can tell you. So, if you ask anyone if you're there, well, simply, that means you're not there. On the other hand, there are a number of clinical signs, symptoms that affect all areas of a person's life. I will try to give you this clinical picture. Symptoms that I can see in myself as well as in all the brothers and sisters who are going through the same thing, who evidently don't ask themselves if they're agape because they have recognized themselves. But the cartography, the signs, the manifestations of this natural state are always the same. So this clinical picture that I am going to draw up is to give you elements about yourself in order to identify within you whether some of these signs are present or not. I insist on the notion of the permanence of these signs within some fluctuations that are obviously linked to the circumstances of life in this world. But this clinical picture gives you all the criteria that are permanently active in this natural state. So what does it give us symptoms? It gives first of all a new feeling for the beings of a kind of fluidity, of ease. You are obliged to notice after a certain time that everything in your life goes effortlessly. Then of course, there's resilience, something else there are faculties of adaptability, of new adaptation that the person can only notice. Another aspect is benevolence, thoughtfulness, availability for what is happening, a clear vision of the ins and outs, the echoes and effects of what is happening. This is not mediumity, it is not clairvoyance, but it is simply something that is observed in all areas of life. There's what is called an availability, an availability for oneself but also for all the circumstances we go through but also for all the human beings we meet, even unknown ones. There's no projective component, there's a spontaneous capacity to be there, that is not in thoughts, attention is much more reliable. The smile is most often permanent without necessarily trying to smile. Emotions that can occur like any human being because it is not a question of not having an emotion, but what is characteristic of these emotions is that they have no effect on memory, that is to say, you do not attach an emotion experienced in the present to any past event. These emotions have no effect on the memory and especially no effect on the body. Indeed the normal human being whether it is anger, sadness in the vast majority of cases, there are physical symptoms to this emotional state. The emotion is lived but it does not impact the body, there is a decoupling of the effect of the emotions on the mind, even we will see it on the aggregate body, so there are no symptoms. When someone is very stressed, they may have a knot in their throat, in their stomach, and this is something that almost doesn't exist at all in an individual in a natural state. So another thing that will seem strange to you for those who are not yet living it, perception is direct, it does not go through cognition, it does not go through the perception of an energy or even through a vibration. Interruption I was talking about direct perception that does not pass through any vision, that does not pass through energy or vibration. That corresponds roughly to what no eyes described a few years ago, without eyes, which is the direct vision of the heart. It's a little bit the same principle when I tell you, I speak without thinking, I let thoughts unfold without any intervention. It had been called, I believe by no eyes, the vision of the heart. Then one also clearly notices a kind of flattening, of regulation of the salient reliefs of the personality. The biophysical stability that I was talking about in neuroscience, the stability of temperament and personality is such that whoever likes it cannot make a mistake, there's one before the natural state and there's the natural state. 
The other is always lived as a fragment of oneself. Remember that what I am saying has nothing to do with work to be done, but is something that is established quite naturally without any effort. The natural state can never be an effort. At the emotional level we also see what is called in sports psychology of an English word called flow, F-L-O-W. We talk a lot about it in sports because all sportsmen and women, especially in individual sports, are very good at identifying these moments of flow, and a sportsman or woman tries to reproduce it. I will give you that precise definition afterwards but in its natural state, the flow is almost constant when you lose it, you feel it instantly and the rectification of the thoughts or emotions present at that moment brings you back into the flow spontaneously. So the flow is the athlete to whom everything succeeds, for example, for a tennis player, because I also like to work a lot in sports psychology and in sports coaching, the athlete who has lived it once, will never forget it. It is the moment when he transcends his technique, it is the moment when the shots are released spontaneously and all real, professional athletes live with all these trainings, these mental or other preparations to establish this flow. Because when you're in this flow the neurobiological efficiency is maximum. The flow is this maximum neurobiological efficiency. The movement of the arm and body for tennis is like a dance, everything seems easy, everything succeeds to the sportsman. So in sports psychology, we try to work not on technique. In general, these high level athletes master the technique but like them, they are not in a natural state, they try to re-trigger the state through techniques that we call mental preparation. It is a cognitive therapy technique where the athlete will try to connect, to revive those moments of flow that he has lived in the past or in the present instant. Uses breathing techniques, visualization techniques, in short, this is the work of the mental coach or mental preparer who today takes a predominant place in the accompaniment, in the accompaniment of athletes. So for those who are in a natural state, the flow manifests itself spontaneously and it simplifies life because the synchronicities, the gifts, the readjustments of the self are done by themselves, without effort, unlike sport. In fact, the maximum neurobiological efficiency is a state of maximum efficiency with minimum energy expenditure. That's why athletes who are in the flow do not feel tired. They bathe in a bath of endorphin and for them too in those moments, in a bath of dot for mine which I remind you is linked to the search for novelty. This is when the athlete is closest to the present instant. In all sports they tell us the same thing, so as they don't often know the word flow, they all tell us the same thing. I live this match in a state of grace and ease, without any effort. Unfortunately for the sportsman it doesn't last. It is a little bit like the one who is in the natural state, grace is almost constant at all levels. The mind no longer directs the person, it is seen for what it is, a tool that serves us when we need it to understand things we want to understand, but apart from that the mind no longer screets ideas, thoughts, it will strengthen the availability in the present instant. The body, whatever its age, recovers a harmonious functioning. I call this flexibility and elasticity. Indeed, there can no longer be anxiety, there can no longer be stress, whatever the nature of the stress, of course, because stress represents several causes and several expressions. I don't have time to go into the details of this. Just know that there's good stress and bad stress. We speak in English of you stress or the opposite of distress and e, then in the good stress. Interruption. Good stress increases alertness, increases motivation, increases pleasure, joy. For distress, it is exactly the opposite. You lose your means, you are less efficient, the mind is less clear. Stress management, whether for individuals or for companies, is an essential knowledge. As I have the time, I will describe the different types of stress. So, independently of good and bad stress, we also determine a global stress level. We determine cognitive stress, there are people who are very good at it. It is their own thoughts that generate stress independently of any stressful situation, and, above all, another important element. What is the nature of your response to stress and that is independent of the amount of good stress or bad stress? This was found a very long time ago, by a researcher called Henry Labrit, who said that when faced with a stressful situation, the individual has only three choices, as I've already mentioned. Escape, struggle or denial. It is the denial of stress that triggers this terrible disease that we call burnout. 
There you go, I could talk to you for a week about stress. When we talk about stress globally, you should know that it is totally correlated. It is totally in line with what we call in medicine oxidative cellular stress. When you're stressed, there's a change in the body's own organs, functions, a modification of the cellular metabolism which leads to what is called extracellular oxidative stress where the local pH becomes acidic and, if this stress lasts, will then trigger a phenomenon of secondary alkalinization and the appearance of chronic or degenerative diseases on the body's own of the body schema that corresponds to the stress. So much so that today's approach to stress, to stress management, takes this into account and therefore, we can correct stress, certainly mechanically, chemically, but not on the causes, it is called in this phase of acidity of the body the antioxidants that regulate stress in the body and, by resonance, lift the stress lift. Understand also that in the natural state all that is necessary and useful happens spontaneously. It is a state of grace where there is no room for action slash reaction. Suffering is no longer active at the level of the being, certainly pain can exist, physical pain but there will be no suffering, whereas classically in every human being, suffering is pain and pain is also suffering. The pain of the natural state does not imply any suffering, but it is the same pain. As I told you earlier, there was a decoupling of emotions that no longer causes damage to the body and therefore there is no more oxidative stress, which explains that whatever you ate when you're in the natural state, your body literally rejuvenates. All the facial features that were related to the stress lived under stress disappear. All the physiological functions become different, there can no longer be any impulses, even sexual impulses. Sexuality is liberated from impulses and it is an act that is consciously decided, there is no more search, no more desire, there is no more search for pleasure, there is an almost permanent satisfaction of all that is. The physiological nutritional needs change completely, I have a meal every three days, what I call a real meal. The need for calories is extremely reduced, all addictive behaviors are extinguished by themselves, the pleasure at that moment is in simplicity, it is the enjoyment of the present instant and the ability to be free of all collective, social and moral contingencies. There's no need to look for any morality because, whether you want it or not in the natural state, everything is moral. Interruption Anyway, I said pretty much everything I wanted to say, I was into physiological changes. The amount of sleep needed is greatly reduced, all the needs no longer exist. There is simply the pleasure of deciding. To make love, to eat, but it is never hunger that drives us or desire of any kind. Desire, in quotation marks, is totally free. That's what I had to tell you about this general state. I could actually define it more precisely, resilience and all that, but you have definitions everywhere. The natural state is lit as a permanent gift of life. You let everything that happens come to you, you are no longer in control as a person and you have become the intelligence of light. Then of course, all this is valid for those who do not feel the energies and vibrations. In the same way that when you feel the energies and vibrations, there are a number of manifestations for those brothers and sisters there that are a warmth in the rib cage, cardiac breathing that seems to happen in several stages and no longer in two stages, a state where one is often on the verge of shivering ecstasy. There is no longer any need or desire to meditate, to pray, to do anything. Your life is prayer, you are at that moment in inner freedom. You are forced to find that all areas of your life lighten even if you are dying of an illness. All these signologies, all these clinical signs, I have really spotted them in all those who are awake in a general way and without effort. We see clearly, without image and without vision, what I was explaining, that is to say that everything that takes place is a film, a theater scene, a video game in which you are an actor, of course, but you are not fooled by what you play. You clearly perceive it as authentic, as truthful, as whole. Whether you want it or not at that moment, whatever your previous personality was, humility and simplicity are more and more evident. Pleasure is natural, it is taken in living this natural state. That's the big picture of this state. So of course, for those who have been living the energies that have been feeling them for years, there's the activation of the three crowns. The crown of the head, the crown of the heart and the crown of the sacrum. You perceive the wave of life which is a vibration that starts from under the feet and goes up through three different circuits in the legs, on each side to merge with the sacrum. 
You easily feel the energies flowing through what is called the Kundalini, which is called the channel of the ether. You don't need vision, you don't need a scenario, you don't need to plan and anticipate unless, of course, you have to travel, buy a train ticket, that's the normal logic. So here are the main lines of what I wanted to tell you. In collaboration with, Autry and Valley. Through Jean Luc Ayun. Less Transformations. English Translation, LMF.